Hi there. I've received a few emails uh, from people <clears throat> after posting some photos about how to create nice, clean, and tight hatches. And uh, so I thought I would do a little video clip instead of just posting some photos. It might be a little easier to explain with a video. Um, so what we're talking about here is if you look over here, I'm working on a Avon's F104 right now. And if you look closely at some of these hatches, there's two hatches, one on the top right here, and another one farther back, main hatch over the turbine. And these come as separate moldings and don't quite fit perfectly to the fuselage. So what I did is I created, using some filler, I created a nice hatch, a nice joint. between the fuse and the hatch, just like that. And same on the back here. I also use this technique to join the two fuselage halves, the nose and the rear. And uh, this is just in place. This, this will actually be a tighter joint when you bolt it together. And once painted, it's almost invisible. So let's just pull that off. free like that so seeing as I've already done the hatches what I what I thought I would do is maybe show you this technique on the wing to fuselage joint and we can try to make a nice uh, a nice seam there yeah but this technique you can use all over for different different applications so let's get started Okay, so I just put the wings on, and what we want to do is we want to have a nice seam between the wing and the fuse. And if you come in here a little closer, try to show this, you can see there's a bit of a gap right now between the wing and the fuse. Also you'll notice this isn't quite level. If you lay a straight edge across it, you can see there's a bit of space between the wing, the top of the wing skin, and the top of the fuselage here. So we'll be able to build that up as well and fill in here and make this a nice transition. Looking at the other side, it's a little more, even more obvious. See the, the gap between the wing and the fuse. And that's no problem. In fact, using this technique, you almost want a bit of a gap there so you can get some material in to fill that out. Okay, first, so first, before we get started, I just want to talk briefly about some of the supplies we're going to use. I'm going to use some packing tape. This creates a, will create a parting seam. The other thing that works really well is monocoat, just your standard monocoat or a conocoat or any sort of plastic film you remove the clear backing and then this becomes your parting um, film between the two two parts I used it on the nose I put a piece of monocoat on the nose and then um, put some filler in bolted the nose on let it cure and then sanded it smooth so that's a good use for monocoat probably the only good use for it in my opinion um, the other thing we use is, I like to use a USC icing. It's a two-part um, filler that sands really easily. It cures really quickly. Um, so you can move quickly uh, through the process. Uh, but any sort of two-part filler would probably work. Um, you don't need a lot of it. And if it, if it cure, the quicker it cures, uh, you know, the more you can get done in a session. If it cures too quick and you're trying to do a big area, then that might be a problem. But we just do a little part at a time and it seems to work well. So, and then of course your sanding blocks and stuff like that we'll get into in a minute. So, let's get started. The first thing. Okay, the first thing I like to do is get a sense of where I'm gonna be adding filler 
before I even start. So it looks like there's a low spot here and a low spot here. I already know I'm going to be putting it all on the seam. But let's take a quick look. As I just run a ruler along here, I can see I'm going to need some right along here and some out here. pretty close there on here it's all on the wing so just so I'm not gooping filler all over here and then sanding it all off later just so I have a sense of where I'm going to need it I'm going to need some in here there's a few blemishes I like to put a little bit right along there anyway so we get a nice sharp joint. So that's what I'll start with. And I'll do that on both sides. Both sides of both wings and top and bottom. Let's roll it over so you can see the bottom just briefly. Okay. It's the bottom of the right wing panel. You see the gap we're going to need to fill between the wing and the fuse. It looks like primarily it's all along the wing here. Not as much, maybe a little bit more out here. And then some in the nose area on the fuselage. Not too bad. All right, so I'm going to do that on, on the other wing, top and bottom, and then we'll come back and get started. Okay, so now I've finished marking where I need filler. And as we work through the process, it takes a few iterations of filling and sanding, filling and sanding. So these marks will change every time you add some filler and sand it off. So let's slide this wing panel out. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead of piece of tape right along the surface here. Let's uh, just clean this up a little bit. because we're going to have some filler in here. Good idea to scuff this up a little bit. So I'm going to use a piece of packing tape, but like I said, you could also use a piece of monocoat. Now the filler won't stick to the tape, or the monocoat for that matter, so that's what makes it a nice material to use. We need to cut out the hole for the anti-rotation pin in the wing. As well as the slot that the wing blade spar slides through. Obviously, probably goes without saying, but you want to be very careful that you don't get any filler on the anti-rotation pin or on the blade spar as you're installing it or to make it very difficult to get the wing off afterwards.
So let's just do a quick test. Make sure this is going to work okay. Okay. So now we have the fuselage, the wing, and a piece of tape in between the two to avoid them being permanently stuck together. So, the, so let's get started. I'm, I like to do it in, se in smaller sections. So what we'll do first is we'll just focus on this top surface of the wing and the joint. And then we'll do the bottom, then we'll do the other side. We'll come back, we'll do the inside. Um, you could do the inside a little bit now too if you wanted. Um, but let's just focus on one area at a time and um, it'll go a little smoother. So let's get started here. This is, let's move this out of the way a little bit so you can see what we're going to do. Okay, let's get started. I should mention this is the first time I've ever done something like this. So, first time I've ever done a video of doing something like this. And uh, so I'm sure it's going to be pretty amateur at best. But maybe if it's well received, I'll do a few more. Had a lot of people gener not generous enough to share their tips and ideas with me over time. That um, I have no problem doing the same. Not many builders these days because people like to buy the uh, almost ready to fly models. But in the event you want something unique, anyway. So this is the the icing the the uh, polyester finishing putty I like to use. It's made by USC. You can buy it at many online uh, automotive body shop supply places. It's not too expensive for 24 ounces, or $20. Comes with a small tube of hardener. And so we just put a little bit of hardener into the filler. The more hardener, the quicker it'll set up. Just mix it up. And it'll set up pretty quickly, so you want to move pretty quick. Let's see if we can do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put a bead along the inside edge of this wing panel. We'll start with that joint first. be perfect again maybe a little less material as you get close to the the blade spar because we don't want to join it together permanently same with the anti-rotation pin not too much over there all right, once we have it on, go ahead and mount the wing to the fuselage. Squeeze it in tight. Tie down the wing. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and put some more filler in because we know we're going to need it. Yeah, just okay if you get some on the other side of the tape. It's not critical. Eventually we're going to be building this up, but for now we'll just do it like this. I like to use like a playing card or a hotel room key. Just go along and just smooth out the filler. have to be perfect because you're going to go back and sand it later but keep it a little relatively smooth makes less work for yourself down the road
Like I said, I use just a plain card because it keeps it nice and sharp. It has a nice sharp edge. You can throw them out. This was the Jack of Diamonds, but of course you could have used the Queen of Spades. Would have worked just as well. that that's it for the first part so we'll let this start to set up a little bit it won't take long I'm gonna leave this running in real time so you can see how it starts to set up the nice thing about this is we can leave it in place continue to do all the filling, do the sanding, then when we break it apart we'll see our joint. You could also let it cure now, break it apart, sand it, put another piece of tape back on, push it back, go back and forth that way too, but we're not going to do that. So I'll show you on a piece here that's, that's already cured, or starting to. You see it starts to get harder and you can cut it, break it apart there. And the nice thing about that is if we had some big spots that we wanted to get rid of, see down here at the end of the trailing edge, we could just go in, we can easily cut them off. In fact, we can go along and just trim this seam of tape carefully along the edge. And remove it. So at this point we could go back and we could start putting some some filler down this back side. But we'll let this harden up, firm up, and maybe we'll swing the fuse around and do the other side. Okay, we're back for the other side, the other wing panel. Got my icing, just mixing it up now, mixing the hardener into the putty. Going along the, the wing now, just putting a bead of the filler on the top edge later we'll go back and we'll do the bottom edge in the same exactly the same way Slide the wing on. Get a good squeeze, get a nice joint. And snug up the panel. You can feel, see a few small voids. You might want to try to push the filler down into. particular importance this time we're using the king of diamonds
that's it pretty straightforward the process is pretty simple it's just a matter of repeating it all right looking at the first side we did it's starting to set up now the longer we leave this the easier it'll be to sand so we're not going to sand it quite yet but what I thought I would do is I'd pop the wing off and we can either add more tape if it's needed um, or leave the tape on there and do the bottom half so let's do that let's loosen this off it's a little bit of squeeze there we go just break that free now you can see it broke away from the tape nice and clean pull this out and show you and this is our this is our filler solidifying on the inside of the wing what we'll do is we'll do the bottom the same way then we'll come back once it's all cured you can slide this back on now you can you'll start to see if we sand it smooth we'll end up with a nice nice clean joint in there so let's do that let's flip this over and let's do the other side Okay, now we're looking at the same same wing panel. We just we're looking at the top. Now we're doing the bottom. So we're now we're going to fill the bottom in the same manner. So we get our icing. Maybe I'll speed some of this up on the the final edit of the video. Make it a little more interesting. Get it mixed up. Let's apply it all on the wing. Got to put this up here so you can see it. doesn't need to be a lot as you can see on the top half how it's really squished out now another advantage of a nice tight wing joint is that when you're flying the wing and the fuselage are snug against each other for the full length of the cord helps with the anti-rotation pin everything stays in nice and tight if it was loose it would put a lot of stress on the wing spar even just a small amount put quite a bit of stress as you flew or you landed all right so let's slide this in get it nice and tight so the top is already tight what we need to do is Okay, now we're looking at the same same wing panel. We just we're looking at the top. Now we're doing the bottom. So we're now we're going to fill the bottom in the same manner. So we get our icing. Maybe I'll speed some of this up on the the final edit of the video. Make it a little more interesting. Get it mixed up. Let's apply it all on the wing. Got to put this up here so you can see it. doesn't need to be a lot as you can see on the top half how it's really squished out now another advantage of a nice tight wing joint 
is that when you're flying, the wing and the fuselage are snug against each other for the full length of the cord. It helps with the anti-rotation pin. Everything stays in nice and tight. If it was loose, it would put a lot of stress on the wing spar. Even just a small amount put quite a bit of stress as you flew or you landed. All right, so let's slide this in. Get it nice and tight. The top is already tight. What we need to do is there's a few spots where we can add some filler still. See some voids. Probably right around the spar, nanny rotation pin. I was overly cautious about not putting a lot of material, a lot of filler in there. Get the playing card to the Queen of Hearts or Queen of Diamonds. That Queen King I mean something to people who play poker. Set up a little quicker this time. Probably put a bit extra hardener in it. That's okay. All right, that's that. Pretty straightforward. You can tell you're already starting to get the just of what we're doing here. So I'll go and do the other wing and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll come back and we'll look at the very first one we did and see if we can start sanding it. Okay we're back now. I did the bottom both sides of the both wings and they're uh, they're curing now so before I take this off before we start sanding I had mentioned earlier that there's a slight radius on the fuselage here and a few little blemishes to fill in. So before we remove the tape, our tape parting line, which is still here, but just trim back, and before we start sanding, I just want to put in a real thin little bead of filler right along there so when we sand it, we can get a nice sharp edge between the two, between the fuse and the wing. I'm gonna do that on both sides here. Uh, see if we can do that, and then let that dry. Move this back a little bit so you can see. Okay, I'm just mixing up the icing. We're going to the same way. Don't need very much because the wing is act the fuse I mean is actually higher than the wing, so most will get sanded off. If you wanted, you could probably take the wing off, put the tape on the wing side, and uh, you know put some filler in and push it back in, squeeze it together. But I'm not going to do that. some filler all the way down here in this little crack. Use my finger to help push it in.
playing card just to kind of clean up the extra. If you get some of it off, it just means less sanding work later. Now you notice, I'm trying to move the camera a little bit closer so you can see this. Hopefully you can see it. I got some filler and I did this intentionally because I wanted to show this. Some filler on both sides of the tape. See back over on the original filler we had applied. I'd like to see some, could use a little spot right there. Now that's okay, that's not going to stick our wing permanently to our fuselage because we still have our our tape in there acting as a parting seam. Once we sand it all down flush, pull the tape off, everything will be everything will be fine. So I just wanted to show that. Also I noticed up here the tape is looking to move a little. It's not staying perfectly straight. So if you want to have a perfectly straight seam, we're going to have to go back in there later with a little filler and um, some tape in between. And just repeat the process. There's no hurry. You want to get a nice, nice clean joint there. At the end of the day, nobody will probably even notice it but you. But it's one of those things that will always nag you every time you look at your model if you see a big, big seam there. I started the video talk saying that I this is the method I use for hatches. So this is the exact same system of some tape or some monocoat acting like a parting seam between two surfaces. And we just build up the filler, and once when you see that it's sanded smooth, you'll see the nice joint it creates. So I'm gonna stop the video, I'm gonna go do the other side and um, do the same on the bottom, and then by then hopefully this will have set up and we can start sanding. Okay, we're back. I've gone around and filled in the obvious areas that I could see. And now it's time to start sanding this flush and then we'll see what we have. The tape is still in there in the event we want to add more filler. Um, it's not critical. We can always come back and reapply the tape. That's not a big deal. So let's start. Hopefully this won't make too much dust. Okay, so we're starting to get a smoothed out edge. You see some low spots in the filler here. We can go back with some filler or continue to sand. There's a little void right here that's gonna have to be filled, but anyway, you get the gist of it. And I'll continue to work on this, make a nice transition from the fuse to the wing with some more filler. In fact, maybe that's what we'll do right now before we sand too much more. All right. So what we'll do, I'll pause it, I'll put some filler on here so we can continue to blend this, this transition right here nice. And then uh, we'll sand it and I'll pop the wing off and you can see the joint we've created. Maybe I'll show, figure I'd show maybe the application of this because this is kind of one of those steps that you do, you know, many, many times through the build where you're just applying some filler, smoothing it out, letting it cure, sanding it. So I'll just show you how I do it. Mix up a little bit of the filler. 
Now you could probably even use a one part filler for this. I still like using the two part because it cures quickly and it does sand nice. So mix it up. I like to use like a hotel room card because it's nice and firm. Hotel key. So just put a little filler on a few of the problem spots. It's okay if we go over our our line back here. That's okay. It's not going to glue it. It's not going to fuse the wing and the fuse together because we still have our tape in there. Plus we're going to sand this off back down to that line. So, just, just using the hotel room key. Just move it all the way along. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to go back with the sander after. You know, especially this edge right here. You know, we'll get this nice and smooth with the sandpaper. But the better you can do it now, the, the less work you'll make for yourself. So we'll leave that for about 15 or 20 minutes. You can see how thin I put it on. You can even see the line between the fuse and the wing. Here it's a little bit covered up, but that's okay. We'll sand that off. But that just shows you that the filler is mostly being used on the wing as the fuselage is the high point. So I'll stop it there and then I'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, so we've let this set up a little bit, the, skim, the little skim coat of filler. Did the same thing on the other side. Um, I didn't mention it before, but I usually use 80 grit paper to knock it down first, and then I'll follow it up with some 150 grit. Um, that's probably ample for now, and then once you start priming and filling, you go into the more finer grits. But um, so let's let's start with this, and let's see if we can blend this out a little nice, nicer. Okay, so we'll come back and we'll do, later we'll do some fine, fine sanding and, and detail work on this. This whole wing has to still be blocked out and primed a few times with some guide coat. Uh, this might be the best time to mention it, but now that we have this nice blended seam here, every time you sand on the wing or sand on the fuselage, some significant sanding, you want to make sure that these are together. Same with the hatches. I like to always leave the hatches on if I'm working around those areas. So let's take a little, let's take this off now so you can see where we're at. It's a little snug because I, I did some filler on the bottom, but anyway, so now you see we've created a really nice seam here, and uh, actually, if we want, we can pull this right out. We still have our tape in here which I'll reapply when I go to do the bottom.
All right, so now if you remember when we first started, the gap we had, we had that beveled edge on the top of the fuselage. That is gone. We slide the wing on. Now when we snug it up to the fuselage, you'll see we have a really nice joint there. So once that's painted, color coded and detailed and weathered, that will look probably almost disappear. Although the real plane obviously does have an actual panel line there, so it won't hurt if it doesn't totally disappear. But that's it. <clears throat> that's basically the steps involved, and you know there's obviously a lot more work to do. But that's how I deal with hatches, getting a nice tight joint on hatches, um, panels, seams where the the fuselage in this case broken part in two, has a removable nose, um, giving that a nice joint, and then also the wings. So on other planes, this might also be the stabilizer um, to the fuselage, but all sorts of areas. Could also use it, I guess, on gear doors, to try to get a nice tight seam on gear doors, although you probably don't want them too tight or they'll get hung up. Um, but that's it. Hope this uh, video was helpful, and you know, feel free to provide some feedback. If there's anything I can uh, do differently next time. Thanks a lot.